I thought maybe it has a message which is a little bit interesting, inshallah. So my brother, Jazakallah for your question, it helped, or the sister it was, I think. Ah, no thanks, water later, inshallah. <laughs> Do you have to tell your future husband your past sins? The answer is no, N-O. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a fact. I, I'm, I'm giving you a one-word answer, but it's, it's a problem. You don't need to say anything. It's between you and Allah, and Allah forgives you. He is not Ghafur Rahim, nor is He your Lord, nor is anything, no, nothing, not at all. Allah, Allah, Allah. With regards to good deeds, sometimes the thought crosses our mind that maybe the reason we are doing it is to give ourselves inner peace rather than the satisfaction of Allah. Is this correct? How can we overcome this? Inshallah, we are doing everything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as for inner peace, definitely. So if you have a combination of both, there's no problem. Not at all. It's not wrong to say I'm doing this for my own inner peace because it is part and parcel of Allah's pleasure because it is Allah who can give you inner peace. Wallahu a'lam. If you have to work at a place for some reason and uh, they, there is no praying facilities there, what are you supposed to do? Do you just pray your qada? My beloved brothers and sisters, it, that's a difficult question. Salah is something that should never ever be missed. Even if it means you're sitting in the lecture hall, you know, everybody's busy and you're busy reading your salah while sitting and you do your rukur by moving slightly <coughs> forward, Sami Allah liman hamid and you sujood a little bit more than that, I think that would be better than to leave it to, to become qadha. Because we don't have any reason for our salah to be qadha. We shouldn't leave it. We should fulfill our salah no matter where we are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us goodness. Obviously, you will need to ask your local scholars. Maybe, you know, they might have other solutions for you. Because I don't know the, the situations here exactly. But I do know, do know other varsities. Sometimes they tell you, you know, we've got... Uh, lectures that run into through a whole salah time like from just before Maghrib right through to the time of Isha and so on what to do they, they have been ulama who have answered the way I have Wallahu alam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and create ease for us all inshallah Difficult question. Can you ask your possible spouse if they have committed X, Y, sin regarding, for example, chastity? I think referring to adultery, I guess, or, you know, if they've had sex before marriage, can you ask them? But the reality is, look, as, as an individual and human being, you can ask them. It's not going to cut ice. What will it do to you? It will just make you start doubting things. It will make you start uh, thinking things. It will make you... Uh, a lot of the times I say these type of sins are between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they do something when they are married to you, now we're talking something else. But prior to them being married to you, you may ask. It's not wrong, meaning if you feel that that's what you want, nobody's going to say don't ask. But sometimes they may lie to you. A lot of people would not like to tell the truth. And some, and you would, you know, like some people say, ask no questions and you shall hear no lies. I don't know if you've heard that. But that's what it is, that if you ask no questions, you won't hear lies. But if you putting someone in a corner, they may not tell you. But there are consequences to questions. So think of the consequences. So sometimes you want to know, they might tell you, yes, yes, you know what? And then you'll start saying, okay, who? And then name 10 people you know. You say, oh, no. <laughs> so there are consequences. So what I'm saying is think about it. It's that everyone has, for example, certain things they wouldn't be proud of telling other people. And so let it be that way, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us assistance. Can women visit the graveyard? The answer is, according to some ahadith, la'an Allahu za'irat al-qubur is one narration. Allah has cursed the women who visit graveyards. So that's one narration which would say, don't go. And there is another narration which says, la'an Allahu za'warat al-qubur. Allah has cursed the women who frequent the graveyards. So that would mean do not frequent the graveyard. So there are two opinions in fiqh, both of them are correct. Which means uh, those who, you know, I think the Hanabila and the Hanafiya are, are a little bit more strict and they say you shouldn't go at all. And the, the others, the, the Shafi'i and the, the, the Maliki, 
uh, they, they take the other opinion to say, if it is once in a while in the condition of Tahara and you really have to go and for a bare minimum of time with certain conditions, then you may go so as long as you don't frequent and you come out uh, as soon as possible. So it's, it's a minor issue, inshallah, meaning uh, I've explained it as best as I could. Laziness and how to combat it, it's a difficulty. You need motivation in life, you need to be able to focus, you need to have a goal and you need to be self-determined. You also need to have a healthy diet. Sometimes when you don't have a healthy diet, too many sugars result in the candida, in the belly, probably multiplying, and you feel lazy and lethargic and so on, and you don't know. And someone comes and says, hey, just check if I got a gin, just check for me if I got a gin. It's not the gin, it's too many cokes sometimes. So, so we need to know our diet needs to be correct, our sleep needs to be correct, unnecessary, uh, you know, staying awake at night, especially with the computer. You can, we get carried away sometimes. It happens to all of us, myself included, where you're doing something before you know it. Wow, it's three hours gone. You need to be able to say goodbye, switch it off. Even if people say, you haven't replied me, I'm sorry, I'm just a human being. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, if you've got your sleep in order, your eating in order, your link with Allah in order, your goals in order, inshallah it will help you to combat that laziness. Over and above that, you need motivation. So get something that will motivate you, inshallah. You know, you need motivation. What do you want to do? If you're not motivated for it, you're going to feel lazy. You tell someone, listen, you know what? We've got a ticket to Honolulu on holiday, five star, mashallah. And we've been given a yacht there. The flight's leaving at 3.30 from London. What will happen? We'll get up at 2 in the morning, not even 2, well before that. And we'll be at the airport two, three hours early. Why? Because motivation is something, you're going to achieve something. So the same applies, inshallah, when we have uh, motivation for something, we feel more to do it and less lazy. Can you mention non-mahram in your du'a? The answer is yes, you can mention non-mahram in your du'a for as long as it's a sensible du'a, <laughs> What is the best cure for depression, especially when it stops you living your life? My beloved brothers and sisters, hatred, jealousy, envy, uh, you know, diseases of the heart, loss of iman when you don't have faith in Allah, lack of belief in destiny and predestiny, all these result in depression. When you hate someone, it, it, it makes you, it bogs you down. It makes you start doing things that are very unnecessary. When you backbite and you gossip about people, you should know that there are others who are backbiting about you and gossiping. And believe me, that bogs you down. It ties you down to the ground. And it has a long-term effect. So the best bet is don't hate people. And you know, if you really don't like someone, stay away from them. But don't develop a hatred where you now need to do all small, small things to make their lives difficult. And you know, I wouldn't like to see them succeed. And why are they looking so beautiful? And why have they passed their exams? And why have they this? And I shouldn't. So now we go and tell tales and we do this and we paste this on Facebook and we cause a problem. And we get hold of all their friends and typical, typical attitude. Where you get hold of all their friends and send them a message of how ugly she is and how ugly he is. Why would that happen? All that results in more and more depression, it compounds it. To solve the matter, develop your link with Allah. Be happy with what Allah has given you. I tell a lot of people, and I've said it in the past, I think even in, in, in a university lecture in the past, what do you want to depress about? What is it? Is it because you're not succeeding or something's not happening? That's Allah's decision. If you've tried your best and your hardest, then leave the rest in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, some people can't, maybe they, they're taking a bit long to get married. That might be the best thing for you. Allah might be protecting you from a deformed child. Allah protect us all. And Allah grant cure to all those who have children who are challenged. And all those who are challenged themselves. But Allah might be protecting you from something so big. Ask the sisters who are divorced, gone through a torrid, horrible divorce. They'll tell you, sister, it's better to remain single than to be in oppression. Wallahi. Wallahi, they'll tell you that. So don't worry. Allah has His ways, His methods. And try your best and may Allah open the doors for all of us. Everyone has their dreams. You need to adjust those dreams sometimes. Did you hear what I said? Everyone has dreams. You need to adjust them sometimes. You can't always have things the way you want them. Last question, somebody asked me, when next are you going to come to UK? I left that question out. The reason is, I wanted to say, you're getting irritated of me already. <laughs> Last question, mashallah.
بارك الله فيكم Okay, I've answered that question already, so we can take one more, inshallah. It's about the non-mahrams. I think we all want to make dua for non-mahrams. <laughs> <laughs> what is the difference between ibadah to please Allah and to enter Jannah? It's quite similar to the previous question that was asked. You know, the people of Jannah will be divided into a few categories. Those who will enter Jannah because they did deeds in order to enter Jannah. They will enter Jannah. Those who did deeds in order to please Allah, they will also enter Jannah. So you can enter Jannah in both ways. So you can do a deed in order to enter Jannah, it will also be for the pleasure of Allah. But if you have done deeds solely for the pleasure of Allah, it's also, it's all connected, you know. It's all definitely connected. So uh, there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wherein he makes mention of uh, some of the people of Jannah would enter Jannah because they uh, abstained from sins fearing Jahannam. So Allah granted them entry into Jannah. And some of them, uh, they, they did good deeds in order to get to Jannah. And some of them did good deeds and abstained from sin solely for the love of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will also get Jannah. So we, we're heading in the same direction. I can give you another example. Whether you're in Leeds or Bradford or whether you're elsewhere, you'll still get your degree, inshallah. I hope you understood what I said. Which means you might have different uh, lecturers, different halls, but you're still heading in one direction. I think with that, we come to an end. Uh, would I like to take, I can take all of those, inshallah. <laughs> we wouldn't, yes, we're running out of time. Okay, the auction, mashallah. <laughs> okay, I think we'll, we'll stop there. If there is anyone who wants to ask me a question, firstly, you ask the ulama who you know, the ulama whom you, you, you know, who are around you, who've been helping you through your life, the ulama you are comfortable with. If you really, really need to ask me a question, my email is available, muftimenk at gmail.com. There is also a Facebook page you can follow, uh, facebook.com slash muftimenk, or a Twitter account which has the same name, inshallah. You may follow it, it has a message or two. I think more Twitter is more uh, <coughs> informal compared to the Facebook. So if you'd like to follow that, uh, you may benefit. If you don't, you can always uh, unlike, inshallah. <laughs> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. It was really an honor and a pleasure to be here uh, in your midst. And I pray that Allah accept us all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.